Halftime Howl, we've taken it from Long Beach to the beautiful city of Forest Hills, overlooking the Grand Central Parkway with Superfan. Tell us about this great event. Well, tonight, as you see, I'm not in a uh, jersey because I'm known by my peeps here as Don Vito, but of course, Superfan to the great Halftime Howie and Rocco. Tonight, we're going to rock the house, shock the mic, shock the mic and uh, we're going to turn it up because we have a great party of all people honoring people of the service, honoring people that have served the community, a uh, completely multiracial, intergenerational party from 21 to uh, pure stage, which is about 105. So, uh, but seriously, we're going to have a great time and we're really honored the representation of the incomparable Halftime Howie and the best movie reviewer and photographer, Rocco. Absolutely, and tonight it's about also about mentoring. A lot of the young people that you've made such a profound difference in their lives are going to be here. So to me, that's another big part of this, is that your life's work, making a difference, saving lives. Well, uh, Howie gives me a lot of credit about that. To me, it's second nature. In life, you want to give. Life, you want to make an effect. Life, you want to make a change. And as you see, I will introduce you to the people you haven't met on the show. People that hopefully, as Fresh Prince said, I touched their lives, where I gave them an opportunity to make a better choice from street mores to traditional values and do well in life and resist temptation to do negativity. And as they say in the hood, live a correct life, not a foul life. We'll take positivity over negativity all the time. Great party, great cause tonight in Forest Hills. We're talking about mentoring tonight. Super fan, you have your two real sons and two of the men you work with. So let's have an introduction. Well, uh, number one, let me give props to uh, my biological sons who I love dearly. My big son, G-Man, came in from Florida, very successful. And my youngest son who's blowing up like Nitro, uh, <laughs> Skins Man, a.k.a. Little Vito. All right? And I got a man that I uh, bailed out of a fishing pond at one time. My man... Affectionately known as Prime Time. Prime Time. Yeah, Prime, Prime Time on halftime, and this young man over here. Flesh. Michael Roseman. Flesh. Yeah. And uh, they can tell you about. Flash, tell me about how this man changed your life in a positive way. In a positive way. Okay. <laughs> My name is Michael, and I've been known Nature for like more than 15 years. He's been my counselor for about five years. One thing he taught about me is about dedication, hard work, and family. And all these guys have always been part of my family. If it wasn't for him, I would have dropped out of high school a long time ago. It's because of him, I had a, like, an intervention with me and my family to sit down and talk about, like, to go beyond high school. Because of that, it made me realize life is very important and precious. Ever since then, he's always been like a father figure. All right, well, that's awesome. he's, giving, he's giving back more than I gave him because he's not only living a great life, first thing he ever does to a boat rides up on he's, what can I do to help? He always does that. And my man here, prime time! Yeah, yeah. Tell me about, tell me how your relationship with uh, my man to the right. Well, 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 basically it's with Doc, you know, I met him in 97 when I first came to August Martin. I, I went to Thomas S and got kicked out. I had little behavior issues. But after that, you know, I met him because I had a couple problems with teachers talking to me. You know, you got to take it easy. So he was calming me down, you know, got me into doing football and everything else. Making know. the right choices. Yeah, making the very right oh, choices. What happened here? So then... Uh, Peely too. too. Yeah, Peely. yeah, Peely Peely too. Peely. Yeah, as well. And, you know, just showing me the ropes with everything and taking life seriously and just, you know, just take everything one day at a time and just walk that straight and narrow path. And ever since then... Life's just been good and sweet. <laughs> Talk about what your life would have been like if you hadn't met this man. If I would have met him, come oh, on, man. Who knows? I Shut it to think, right? Yeah, street life probably would have caught up with me and everything else. So that man definitely helped me not walk down And that now way. you have a nice life. Married, married, kid, no kids, no kids. But married, married. He's living on your way, on your way, life. doing the right thing. As they yes. say, he's living a correct life, not correct. a foul life. Yes. <laughs> and now let's swing it over here, right over here. Now, I want to ask these two gentlemen what it was like under the roof 
of the man who mentored so many other kids, but he was your father. Mm -hmm. What was it like living under the same roof, having your dad take such an interest in your life? Well, my father, um, the, the best thing about my dad that I don't have, my friends don't have the same feedback in their life about is that my father's always been a friend and not in a bad way where you see parents that are friends with their kids and they're spoiled but friends in the fact that I was always able to be mature at an early age because he always kept it real with me and he was always there to talk about everything no matter what um, anything any subject anytime so there was never any kind of censorship which actually made the, the relationship better and um, as far as guidance and advice and everything, I mean, I owe it to my father and my mother equally, you know, and um, he just was always uh, real. It was never anything fake and, you know, I'm appreciative of it. It's, who I, it's made me who I am today, 100%, you know. My, my phone code is his birthday. He doesn't know that. Oh, nice. Cody. <laughs> well, now, now, now I gotta change that. How's, how's the man, how's the man change that? Yeah. He's a great person to talk to. You know, great role model. In addition to him being my dad. You know, great boss. I'm gonna look up to him. And I wanna thank him. He used to work. Oh, that's great. Thank, right. you. thank you. Very good, very well said. Thank you. We continue with our wonderful night here. And Forest Hills, beautiful Forest Hills, Queens. Keon, talk about this man's influence in your life. The beautiful Keon. That's right. Yeah. The flyest girl I've had, and uh, I hope I had a good effect on her because she supports us all the time. She's come back to a Halloween party, our reunion parties, and she's mentored people, and she runs a daycare center, and she's done wonderful things for the community. So, Kia, <laughs> talk about when you first met exactly. this man. Exactly, Dr. Poole. We're here to talk about him, and here he is bigging me up <laughs> and complimenting me, and that is what makes him awesome, is that when you get into his presence, you feel uplifted. You feel that you can become somebody better, and he gives that, that inviting, warm uh, welcome anytime you get into his presence. When I met him and I was in high school, I came from a home that my mom wasn't always around, um, very unhappy, a lot of emotional issues, and I was able to come into his office, into his room that was huge, and he made us feel welcome, like it was a second home for us, Dog and pound. he was able to, it was called the Dog Pound, <laughs> and, <Be> your leader. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and he was able to make us feel comfortable, we were able to come in there and bring our frustrations, things that we were not able to do at home, and feel very comfortable in his presence, be able to make friends, and he, how old am I now? 35? How many years later from since high school? Wait a minute, to, I'm 48, how are you 35? <laughs> <laughs> to present, to still have that relationship, to still have these type of events where you can come out, have fun, be away from your everyday life, and to be around this spirit is definitely a blessing, and I'm very happy that I went to that high school because I was able to meet him and to continue that relationship years after, that speaks volume about who this man is. The, I know he always has a positive vibe. Yes. A very, very, very into spirituality. How has that played a role in your life? Positivity and being spiritual. Right. There's no way that you can come into his presence and not smile and not <laughs> laugh or giggle like I'm doing right now because he's very positive, he's very uplifting. So if you're down for any reason, and even years after high school, in my own personal life, he has came and played a major role in me developing into the woman that I am today through his words, through the things that he taught me out of high school, into my adulthood, and I'm very appreciative. Talk about how you were able to learn lessons from my friend and apply those lessons and how, how gratifying is it to you to help other young people the way the man was there for you in your, in your early days from high school? As a peer leader, you it all starts back to the leader. <laughs> and this leader, very uplifting, very happy, always bringing in good vibes into any atmosphere. And that is what I offer with my children, with the children in my daycare and people that I'm around. Uplifting, happy, constantly smiling. Not every day is a day that you want to smile and be happy, but from my counseling <laughs> and many of our runnings and meetings and those late night phone calls, like I need help, 
it is at the end of the day life Text live you. be happy texting be happy you only have one life live and enjoy it Keon how long did it take you to buy in to that positive philosophy <laughs> talk about the, when you first met the man how long did it take you to buy into that positive where you really believed in the positivity and taking the right step the first day I met him, it didn't take long wow, to buy Wow, right in. off the bat. Yes, right off the bat. So you were buying what he was selling. <laughs> yes, because if someone comes to you and approach you and they say, hey, look, this is what I had. Um, this is what the services were providing, etc., etc." You're looking at the presenter. And when he presented it, he presented it with spunk. He was happy. And he uses his own product. <laughs> and he shows it. He shows it in his vibrant attitude. So you're like, I want what you have. Or whatever you're on, let me know so I can get on it too. And that's just his natural spirit. So immediately it was like, okay, this is the life that I want. Wow, and you're practicing today, so it's a beautiful story from the very beautiful Keon. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing. Rocco, I just want to say one thing. Why right, carry on years afterwards, there's some people like Keon John. I mean, this is what you hope somebody will be. Beautiful on the inside, even more than her outside. And she gives back, she's loyal, she's dedicated, and she's a consummate woman of valor. Awesome. Fantastic.